Hey there, welcome to Everything Jam. Again, I'm doing my podcast at 1 o'clock in the morning, which I should be asleep because I have to be over to the Blaine Humble Show tomorrow. But anyway, um, thank you for listening. And if you haven't already, please like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram, and subscribe to my YouTube channel, please. I'm asking you very nicely, so it would be very nice if you did that, even if you didn't watch my show. Which I think is kind of funny because um, even though it's an hour long, I've been talking to this guy. He goes, do you think you should make like 15-minute segments? And I'm like, no. <laughs> uh, I understand that people don't listen to the whole thing. I get that. But what I'm going to try to do is kind of break it up so that I kind of learn to stay on track a little bit better so that I can be on this clock and I can put my show on other stations and stuff like that. However, on Blaine Humble Station, we just do whatever we want. So I really like that idea. I mean, you know, we're there for three hours. For one thing, I didn't even think I could sit there for three hours. But we're there for three hours, and it's from 8 to 11 in the morning, and um, it's pretty cool. And um, we'll talk about that a little bit more later. First of all, let me tell you what's been going on. I went to the Kaizen Dojo on Sunday. They had their fundraiser for the St. Jude, um, St. Jude's Children's Hospital. And that was my friend, um, William Ford, who did that. And he raised over $14,000. I'm sure at his final count, it was probably over 15000 But it was like 14414 It was just a lot of fours, I remember that. So, and he fought 40 people. And he was celebrating 40 years in the martial arts. Blah, 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 blah. So um, that was very, very cool. He had a lot of support, and um, it seemed like a good time. Yes. And let me see. Uh, I did Kicking It Old School today. That was a lot of fun. We had some great guests on there. That's at 5 o'clock, 5 to 6 o'clock Pacific Standard Time on KCA Radio, 1050 AM. Um, you can listen at kcaradio.com, or else I do pod post the link, the podcast link on my, um, on my Facebook. Excuse me. Um, so that you can have a listen, but we had some great guests on. We had Karen Shepard, who uh, was a stunt woman. I guess she's still considered a stunt woman, although she doesn't do stunts anymore. She's just doing acting and all that good stuff. Um, she came out in some amazing movies, but she was an interesting guest. She's uh, been uh, um, she's a Masters Hall of Fame alumni. So, and she will be at the event this year, which is on August 1st in Long Beach in conjunction with the 50th anniversary of the um, Long Beach Internationals. So, anyway, we also had uh, Sean um, Gerardo. Gerardo? He's going to kill me. Ah! But anyways, uh, he was talking about his movies that he's got coming out, which is really cool. He's also a martial artist, and that's how we ended up getting to know each other. And we also had Barbara White from um, Bob White's Kempo Studio. Actually, she's doing the Women's Symposium um, so uh, at the Master's Hall of Fame, so that was an interesting conversation as well. Um, again, I'm going to be on Blaine's show. I'm probably going to be doing Tuesdays and Thursdays until I get my own show, which will probably be after surgery because I don't want to like start something and not be able to finish it. And we have a lot of exciting things coming up on that show. It's really cool because I was going to do like decorate the whole background and everything, which I still might do, but not as elaborate as I was before. But over there, you know, I get to play music and I have intros and I have like commercials and da 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 da. Although I'm not gonna play a ton of commercials, I'll probably play a few commercials. I get to do a new music thing. I get to do kind of whatever I want. So it's great. I love it. That's what I like to do. Everything. So anyway, Lay Novels, chaoticradio.com tomorrow, 8 to 11. And the replay is immediately following. Um, let me see. I, I won a KLOS. Oh, actually, my daughter called. We were both calling at the same time. We called it a KLOS, and we won tickets to the Amundsen Theater on Thursday. They're going to be having the We Will Rock You Queen thingy, present queen, whatever it is, tri tribute, blah, 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 show. So, I think I just might let the kids go, and I might just kind of like hang out in Hollywood or something. I'm not really sure, but we'll see how that works out, because... I feel really bad if I have to just have one of them go, but then I might be able to buy a ticket. So we don't know, but um, either way, it's got it's really cool. It, the really cool thing about that too is when I caught KLS because I used to be a switchboarder over there and do some other things, you know, go out with a cool patrol or whatever it's called over there. I can't remember. And uh, it was really um, neat because the DJ actually answered, 
and it was Denise Westwood. And I was just so impressed that she was actually answering her own phone calls and doing her own giveaways and all that kind of stuff. It was crazy, huh? And it, I thought it was interesting, too, because I had that conversation with somebody how back in the day you used to be able to say to a DJ, hey, you should listen to the B-side, you should listen to this, you should listen to that. And they would be able to play it, you know, um, at their own discretion and stuff. And that's just not possible anymore. So, again, we're being spoon-fed all the things that they want us to like, which isn't so much fun. Um, but, yes, so that happened. And, again, the Masters Hall of Fame, August 1st, red carpet event. Yay! Surgery, hopefully, at the end of August. Um... And today we are going to be talking about pink washing. Gee, I wonder what that is. Think pink. Pink ribbon, blah, 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 all that bullshit. Um, also, uh, Colorado has, um, their alcohol sales are on the rise. Go figure. Um, also, the girl who cannot go on her field trip because she missed a day of school and find out why she missed that day of school. Boob update, boob update. Uh, if you haven't already, please follow my vlog. It's kind of trying to chronicle my journey and just tell you what's going on with me and a few little stories about my health and how I got from that point to this point. And um, let me see. Nothing really yet. I'm waiting for my plastic surgery appointment from the City of Hope, so we'll see how that goes. I should have... I should have already got an appointment, but we'll see. And uh, my therapist that I had for like two years, who was an awesome therapist, you know, um, he left. And so I don't have a therapist, so I'm just going to be more crazy than ever. But no, um, it's all good. It's all good. Um, that's, I guess, part of my health update. That has nothing to do with my boob, but I'm just letting you know. Um, let me see. I'm going to be doing more body painting. And if you have been on my Gem Gem Facebook, you have seen Luciana, Luciana's um, work. He painted himself. Yeah, because he was crazy bored. But um, hopefully I'm going to go with the military theme next. That's what I want to do. So we'll see how that works out. I had like a 1,000 pictures and I had to only pick two. And I think I ultimately they only used one of the ones that I picked anyways. But um, yeah, that's going to be really cool. So we'll have those printed up. And I'm going to probably put some quotes on them or something really, really nifty. And uh, sell those on the website. Um, again, if you haven't, uh, check out my vlog, My Sick Boob, and you can find that on my website, theredmoonwoman.wix.com forward slash everything gem. And um, I think you, that's also on my Facebook, so you can check that out too. And it has all of our past shows, and it will have the store, and it'll have a blog and stuff like that too, which I only wrote one so far, but... Um, I try to do something every day. So sometimes I'm on somebody else's show or, or doing something else, and then I just have to kind of post all that stuff. So anyways, that being said, uh, let me see. Um, it was really cool. Today I was on Facebook, and Charles Orlando, which is this relationships guy that um, I used to actually post a lot of his articles before because they are quite interesting when I was with, doing Chaos and Chasm with Vanessa. And um, like I said, he's a relationship dude, and he posted something about like liking your body and how if a guy's into you he's gonna like kind of overlook all the things like the things that you consider to be flaws they're just gonna become part of your personality yeah this is really this really groovy story on it and everything and he's like so you know um let us I, I, like he was talking about how we might sabotage ourselves or um you know avoid relationships because we think we're just not perfect kind of like that Basically, that's kind of what I got from it. So then I responded, you know, so he's like, just accept it and blah, blah, blah. And I responded, well, you know, it would be nice if it was that easy. But it's not that easy. You know, everybody wants to, well, most people that I talk to, they always have something that they want to fix on their body, right? I mean, I hate my legs. Blah. You know, and there's things that I don't like about myself. But um, I tried to, within a small post or, you know, not to be overwhelming, tell him, you know, yes, I wish it were that easy. And um, he replied, which was weird because he gets like thousands and thousands of stuff, uh, posts and stuff. And then I said that, you know, I was recently diagnosed with breast cancer, blah, blah, blah. And that I'm doing this kind of a campaign where I'm going to take before and after pictures and I'm going to just have to love myself with or without the group. And um, it was really cool because he actually engaged in the conversation and stuff. And then I said, if you uh, feel, you know, he's like, oh, yeah, that's very inspirational. And uh, I said, well, um, if you're so moved, please um, add me as a friend. And he did. And that was really cool. But the best part was, well, that was kind of the best part. Well, no, there's not really a best part. But what was really neat is that afterwards I got this message. And this lady um, said that she goes, I just... Um, she sent me a message, and then she sent me a friend request, and she said, 
that um, she had read that I had a lump at my breast. She goes, I'm going for a mammogram and ultrasound today. And she's in Australia. And I was just, it was amazing because I just, I felt like I was really on the right, on the right track, you know, and I told her, well, I'm not going to tell you that I'm sorry. And, um, you know, I just kind of said, you know, I, I understand, you know, and appreciate what you're going through, although I might not know exactly how you feel, but, um, you know, um, I just tried to give her some encouraging words and, and stuff. And it was just awesome that somebody saw that little note and they're like so far away and that I could connect with them. And I messaged her a while ago because, you know, they're on different time. And I, I messaged her and said, you know, hey, how did it go? How are you feeling and stuff? So I'm going to do what I can to, you know, help her. I mean, support her and stuff like that. And that was really great. Those are the great connections, like I said, that, that make me feel like, okay, Jem, you're, you're on the right track. I had a great lunch today, too. I had a great luncheon meeting, too, which makes me feel that I'm on the right track. But we're not going to talk about that because we have so many things to talk about today. Um, anyway, and yeah, okay, a lot of it's about, like, cancer and sick and blah, blah, blah. But this stuff's important because everybody knows somebody, at least one person that has had it. So um, it was really funny. Um, I haven't been able to go do my dumpster diving uh, surveying. I really need to do it, but things keep happening. As you can see, it's 1 o'clock and I'm recording my show, so I won't be done till 2 o'clock. Um, then i got to wash my face at least and crawl in bed and then just get back up. I wish I could just leave my makeup on and get up tomorrow and just go. That would be really cool, but I wouldn't look so good. But um, anyway, <laughs> um, I, I still want to do the whole dumpster diving thing. So just be prepared because it's probably going to come at you in just little bits and pieces, but it is going to happen. And I started thinking about all these other things that I have to really think about. Um, and yeah, it's, yeah, we're going to do it though. We're going to do it. We're going to put this to the test. I posted on my Facebook this little tune. It's called, um, you're a cunt. Yes. And it is the C word, not the other C word. Cause you know what the other C word is. Cause that's my hashtag. But, um, and I was just like thinking, I, I was just amazed, like who, who, who just like thinks I'm going to like put this time and energy into creating this song saying, you're a cunt. The funny thing is, it's so upbeat. Yeah, and it's like a like, kind of a little catchy jingle, you know. Uh, um, but um, if you get a chance, listen to it because it's pretty funny. Um, I don't know, my son was kind of digging it too. He's kind of like walking around the house because it's kind of catchy and I could hear him like, you know, whistling a little tune here and there. I was like, no, uh, but <laughs> it's pretty funny. I went to talk about that last week because it's been there for a while. Um, and let me see. I saw a post today that was about Ronda Rousey. And um, I guess Dana White had posted it. And, you know, Dana White is a martial artist as well. And um, so he's kind of like in that whole community. And um, people that I know know him and blah, 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 blah. That's it. So, um, the post said basically that Ronda Rousey is one of like the finest athletes he's ever had the opportunity to work with and so forth. And of course there was a bunch of guys that just bashed him for it saying, yeah, basically what they're saying is you're sleeping with her, you're backing her, you're da 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 That's why she's the best because Dana White said that he would never have, what I understand is he was like always saying he would never have women on there and stuff like that. And now it's just all about Ronda, um, as far as UFC and Dana White and stuff like that. So uh, even though he's getting Gina on there and stuff like that, you know, it's really all about Ronda. And I thought to myself, this is really stupid. This is really, really stupid. For one thing, I said, okay, for one thing, it's not for goddamn business. Oops, sorry for those people who are in God. But it's not our damn business if, you know, he's fucking her. Let's face it, it really, really, really isn't. And does that, that doesn't even take away from her ability and her performance and, and what she's capable of. I mean, it has nothing to do with that really at all. I mean, um, are we, are we talking about her, her athletic ability and performance or her personal life? Cause it really doesn't really matter at the end of the day. I mean, you know, uh, if you can get a two for one in there, Thumbs up. And the guys that were posting it, I even said to you, I even said to those guys, I said, you know what? If you had the chance to bed with her, to bed Rhonda, I'm sure you would not think twice about it. So why is that, why are they bashing him for it? It's absolutely ridiculous. And I'm not even the biggest Rhonda fan in the world. 
However, I think that those comments are just stupid, 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 stupid. I mean, what are we really talking about there? What is the intention? And who cares what they're doing? I mean, right now it doesn't, you know, really affect things either way. So those are really kind of stupid posts. I just think that people should go ahead and let people be whoever they are, you know, um, especially like in their personal life. Uh, and things like that. Someone today told me something about my Facebook and the nude pictures on there. Um, let's see. There's not, I don't think, a nude picture of me on there, although somebody said that this one girl that's on there was me, and it's not. That was for sure. I wish I looked like that. And then there's another girl there that uh, my, there's this really cool cover page that I have that's got, you know, um, girls in vinyl and it's all black and white. And yeah, the first girl there has just got like her boobs. She's just sitting there with like shorts and boobs and playing records and um, I just I thought it was just kind of strange although I, d I did talk about this before you know that I got reported for one of the pictures but it turned out that it was artsy and Facebook didn't ask me to remove it so that's all good and stuff but um, the thing is is that you know I, I don't really impose my ideals on somebody else and I hope that they don't do it, do it to me um, and um, if you know me, you know that I'm really supportive um, of all those people that are passionate about stuff. And that's something that I really like. You know, I think a woman's body is very, very, very um, beautiful. I mean, sheesh, especially boobs. Boobs are great. I mean, they're, they're, they, they feed your kids. I mean, they give life. They're just so, they're, yeah, they're great. I mean, so, um, it was funny because on one hand I had Charles Orlando telling me, you know, oh, like, you you know, you should tell women you should love your body, you should love this, you know, that. And then on the other hand I asked somebody, say, take those pictures off of your site. What are you, crazy? But anyway, I, I you know, I'm not perfect. Um, I'm sure that I've said things that, um, well, you know, I mean, I, I have to, I've caught myself gossiping and all that stuff. But, you know, what it really boils down to is like the person that told me about it, it's like, are you really my friend? I mean, can you really understand that I'm just trying to be me and live in my true self? Um, I mean, uh, I'm sorry that you don't like that or that it makes you feel uncomfortable. I really don't want to have to tell them, don't look at it. But um, I just don't feel like right now that I want to be in that position where I'm going to do that for anybody. You know, yeah, you want to give me like $10,000 or something like that. Maybe I'll probably change my Facebook. Yep. I will probably sell out for a short time, and um, but it's you know I just I can't do that. It's just it's not in my DNA right now. Anyways, Scott Disick and um, uh, Chloe. It's funny because I don't really do a lot of this entertainment news stuff, but it was funny because they were taking a bubble bath together and they posted a picture. What is that about? Could somebody tell me? What were they thinking? What are you doing in the bathtub? Because I think when you're taking a bath, it's usually to get yourself clean, and you're probably not going to be wearing clothes, but they were wearing clothes. Why were they wearing clothes, and why were they in the tub together? I understand that that family is close. I get it. But what is the whole point? I mean, I guess it's probably like the media, the attention. Maybe they were trying to piss off Sister Courtney or something like that because, you know, they're like, at it. Her and Scott, again. That's how they live. So, you know, what the heck? Um, but, you know, it just seems like usually you do that. I mean, if you're, and if it's not because you're trying to get clean and relaxed, it's because it's kind of like a romantic, kind of intimate kind of thing, right? So, hmm. I wonder about that. But anyway, yeah, how close are they? Um, I'm sure it was just a publicity stunt and stuff, but, you know, they have a nice big tub. Well, they really do. They really do. Um, so let me see. Hmm. I don't. Oh yeah, 18 minutes. I didn't do so good. I'm gonna have to be careful the next time. But anyways, we're gonna go ahead and talk about our first topic, which is the Colorado um, alcohol sales are on the rise. Could it be because um, weed is legal there? Hmm. Sales are up this year, 6.7 percent from January to April. That's that's quite a bit. And 2% um, across the state as well. Um, and there's a 44% 40, of those purchases in the metro area and 90% of the purchases in the rural areas are from visitors. Go figure. So I'm thinking, why are they visitors? I don't get it. Cause it's not like you can buy it there. Or you're going to drive over there to buy it and then 
drive back to another state or something like that. And you'd have to pass through a state where it wasn't legal anyway. So how does that all come into play? And then they, they went on and um, I was reading the article and I guess they have like all these 420 festivals and weed festivals and and themed campsites and all kinds of good stuff like that. So of course people are going to go do that and then they're going to go buy something to drink because they're actually out there to have a good time, you know, to, just to hang out and, and whatever. So that really makes a lot of sense. Um, but, you know, I was just like, hmm, that's pretty interesting. Actually, Colorado um, is a hub for craft beers as well, and I didn't know that. Um, they are, I think it's like third only to California and Washington for craft beer breweries. That's pretty interesting in itself. So, I mean, if they have so many, obviously the sales is going to go up, right? Doesn't take, you know, like um, a genius to figure that out. Um, especially with those festivals. Heck, I want to go to one of those festivals just to check it out. Although, yeah, I mean, that'd be pretty crazy. I mean, do those two things really go hand in hand? I think if you're out there to have a good time, yes, that's what's going to happen. So, and you know, there's all kinds of amazing new um, booze coming out and stuff like that. It's, it's, it's phenomenal. It's phenomenal. So, um, yeah, go ahead, Colorado. Knock yourself out. Washington will be right behind you. And, I mean, you're taking into consideration that they all have the craft breweries, too. Which, if you think about it in that way, we should be pretty soon. We should, like, totally be legal before you know it. Right? I mean, it's, it makes sense. It makes sense. So, dollars and cents, right? So, uh, anyway, the other thing I wanted to talk about was pink washing. And uh, pink washing and think pink. So, pink washing is a term that's given for cause marketing, really. So, um... When I, when my doctors gave me diagnosis, they give you like this packet of papers, those folders, and your contact information, and there's this little pink pin in there, and I pretty much took it off and shoved it right there on the counter and left it there, because I don't need that. Uh, really? I mean, I just got my diagnosis. Do you think that I'm not aware of um, breast cancer? Do you think that I really want to wear this pin? What does this pin mean? I don't want to wear this stupid pin. So I left it there on the counter. I'm sure that they were highly offended by it as well as offended by a lot of the other things that I asked them to do for me, like not use the C word. I said, I don't care what you call it. You can call it poop, you can call it whatever you want. Just don't call it C word. Um, anyways, so um, yeah, I left that pink ribbon there. I was like, I think I'm pretty fucking aware of breast cancer at this point. And um, people do this whole like pink ribbon thing on the yogurts and on the makeups and all this stuff because they're doing this cause marketing thing. So you, um, a lot of people assume when they see that that it's either healthy or um, maybe they're supportive of breast cancer and that money's gonna go back if they purchase that item, but that's not even the case. There is no pre-existing agreement that's made. There is no pink ribbon foundation that just says, okay, you can use our pink ribbon but this is what's got to happen. It doesn't even work that way. Yeah. Go figure, right? So um, it was really funny because I was reading that a lot of times some of the companies will put like good faith money up. So they'll just say, all right, like here's $10,000, but we're going to put, you know, your pink ribbon on all of our stuff, blah, 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 blah. Right? And then it, that's it. So, I mean, and it's, who do you, I mean, they just give it to some random foundation. It doesn't even really that pink ribbon doesn't belong to somebody specific. Is that crazy? So um, also, a lot of times, like Reebok, what they did is they had put out a shoe and they were selling it for anywhere between $50 and $100 and it had the pink ribbon. So it was like this pink ribbon Reebok shoe and they did give money to the Avon uh, Breast Cancer Association. But the limit was $750,000. So once they hit that limit and they're selling these shoes for $100 each, once they hit that limit, the rest was all theirs. So that didn't matter, and there was no way that you would know. It's not like you can go in and say, oh, wow, it's already hit 750000 Therefore, those 20 pairs of pink Reebok ribbon, pink ribbon Reebok shoes that I was going to buy, forget it. I'm not going to buy them anymore. So, yeah, they should have to, like, do something um, about that. Oh, that's so funny because my theme song from Chaos and Chasm is playing in the background. Anyway, um... So, yeah, there, there's no way that you will actually know when that has been reached, which is very, very, very strange to me. But, um, you know, it does, like I said, promote, like, this whole healthy idea. And um, a lot of it is related to that Susan G. Komen 
um, organization that um, has all this breast cancer stuff. That website is just crazy. Um, it's kind of funny. I was trying to find certain things on there, and it was just very convoluted. You know, I wasn't really sure uh, if I was really looking for the right thing. Um, but anyways, um, there are a lot of products that have carried this pink, pink ribbon as well that are actually known to promote cancer. <laughs> the Susan G. Homan Association actually, um, they commissioned a, a perfume that was going to be sold as their official perfume. And that perfume actually had cancer-causing agents in it. So an uh, a organization that's against cancer is giving you perfume that'll give you cancer. Think about this. You're going to use a perfume. What is the largest organ in your body? Your skin. Your skin. I mean, everything that lands on it goes under your lipstick, your makeup, everything, your lotions, Everything, everything, everything gets absorbed and gets taken into your system. And they're going to put out this perfume. So obviously they didn't do that after all. But sheesh, you think somebody would have caught that, right? Wrong. <laughs> Go figure. Um, anyways, a lot of cosmetics are really unhealthy for you too. And they use the pink ribbons as well. Um, and there's just really no regulations on that. Um, yogurt, again, had cancer-causing agents. A lot of them use um, artificial sweeteners and stuff like that. I can't even eat yogurt. Yogurt's not even yogurt, okay? So if you go buy something that says it's yogurt, it's really not yogurt. It's a bunch of stuff that's pretending that it's yogurt. It, that mush in the container, it's a really good actor, and it's like, I'm yogurt. And you eat it, and you're like, oh, gosh, I feel better because I had that yogurt, you know, and I have, like, all these probiotics in my stomach, and, yeah, I'm really healthy, and, yeah, I only had 100 calories because I bought the 100 calorie cup. Wrong! It's just junk. You've just eaten a cancer cup. Yes, my dear. Wear it loud. Wear it proud. Anyway, that yogurt thing, that's a whole other story in itself because we don't even know what is going on there. Anyway, a few statistics that I thought were really, really interesting when I was going through this whole thing. Um, it's that 200, and, and these kind of varied from each different site that I went to, but I, I read off the CDC and some other different journals. Um, but actually, 232,670 women will be diagnosed with breast cancer this year. Yeah. Okay. Out of them, 40,000 women will die. Um, one in eight women get breast cancer. That's crazy. That is insane. Um, they say that those figures are down because we have kind of withdrawn from the whole hormone therapy, depending on where you're at in menopause. I'm sure men are just loving this. But anyways, um, and this is good information to you, for you to know. But anyways, um, it's the most common cancer found in women. Um, it's the second most common cause of death. Of okay, cause of death by cancer for women, and uh, let me see. It's also the most common cause of death by cancer for Hispanic women. No, I'm just kidding. It's all good here. It's all good. Um, so that is just uh, I, I. What can you say? What can you say? So you know, don't get fooled by the pink ribbon or the green ribbon or the blue ribbon or the spotted ribbon or any of those ribbons, um, I would like to, like I've said, I, I want to do this whole nonprofit thing and, and continue continue my cancer campaign because I was also doing research and, and was finding out that usually if you get the cancer in the other breast, it's actually a new uh, cancer. It's not something that has metastasized. I can't say that word. But anyway, it's a, it's actually a new cancer. It's not really that it has spread, although it will spread to other parts of your body. However, if it was the breast cancer that has spread to other organs, maybe your liver or your kidneys or your bones or whatever, um, it is a lot more treatable than if you would have had the cancer initiated there. So if you would have just like started with liver cancer, it's not, you know, as likely that you'll be able to handle that. But, um, you know, if, if it was a breast cancer and it has spread over there, metas yeah, I got to learn that word. I, I mean, I got to learn how to say it. Um, but um, if it has, you know, um, reoccurred over there, then it is um, more manageable. So that's a good thing to know. So why cut off the other boob? This doesn't make any sense, but nobody really tells you that stuff. 
when I was looking at the pathology, there was four different kinds. So I'm going to get like really savvy on that, and then I'll explain that in my blog and stuff. So um, you have a better uh, idea of how all of that works. And remember, it's not just women that, that get um, breast cancer. Men get breast cancer as well. So um, it's good to know. And the things that we're talking about might be breast cancer, but they can apply to any kinds of cancer. So when you find a lump or a mass or something, you know, you want to have it biopsied as soon as possible. I don't agree that we should just sit and watch. And that's what happened to me. Let's sit and watch. Let's see how far we can take this. Um, I just don't think that that's a good option for anybody. You know, I think you, as soon as you know it, I mean, you need to take action and stuff. Um, but if you don't know that, you know, what that action is, how are you going to do that, right? You're just like, okay, well, he said sit and watch. So I'll just, yeah. Anyway. There was another article that I had posted, which just happened to have, have a little bit to do with breast cancer, too. Yeah. Um, and uh, I guess there was this girl. Her name is Maddie Stevens, and she's attending the St. Saint, Saint Giles or Giles. I, I think it'll be, um, let me see, what's that guy's name? J. Giles. Yeah, it's probably Giles. So anyway, St. Giles. Um, school, the junior school, I guess it's some kind of a Christian school, and um, I guess she missed a day of school, and they were going to be going to this dinner, it, I guess it's a school dinner they have every year, it's like this annual one for people who have 100%, um, well they have 100% attendance, so they haven't missed any school, um, and they do at the end of every year, and they were going to go to a place called Frankie and Benny's Restaurant. So um, she was excluded because she missed one day of school. Which, so I kind of understand that because it really isn't just like a regular field trip. It's one that's specifically for people who have 100% attendance. However, her mother had passed away, and she missed that day so she, could, so she could attend the funeral. Gee, let's guess. What did her mom pass away from? Well, she lost her two-year battle, I hate when people say that, battle with breast cancer. So, um, yeah, she took off that day to go to the funeral. Um, after all that happened, the girl never received apology, um, which is kind of interesting. But um, instead, what happened was they just decided just to not do that anymore. They're not going to focus on the 100% attendance kind of thingy. So now all the kids are going to hate her because now they none of them get to go to the restaurant, right? <laughs> Problem solved. Don't you love it? Yeah, it's great. Um, anyway, I just thought that was pretty crazy. Um, it's so funny, like, the different things that, that people um, do and that they have awards for and stuff. Um, but I, I mean... I think they should just rethink it or just think a little bit ahead of time. You know, do they have excused absences and stuff? Or, I mean, how, how, what kind of absences are there? You know, are, you know, can we categorize them as like, you know, um, completely unavoidable? Like, I'm in the hospital, um, I was in a horrible crash. You know, those kind of things, those kind of um, extreme situations where you do miss school. I mean, does that carry a different weight or whatever? I'm not really sure how that all works. Um, my kids go to a great school. Um, and, yeah, that's probably all I'm, I'm going to say about that right now. So, let's see. I have a couple other things that I needed to talk about. Let me see. Um, I wanted to do my it's a great life kind of thing. Um, I know I started talking about it the last time, and we probably won't get to a full hour, so you guys will probably be really grateful about all the <laughs> But um, I, this story, um, let's see. Okay, so let's see. My dad, um, my, this is my quick dad story, which none of my dad stories are very quick. But uh, my dad was actually... Um, he, you know how you go to school and they say, can you write about like your summer vacation or maybe write about the, the person that was like, uh, left the biggest impression on you and stuff. My dad definitely left the biggest impression on me, not just because he was my dad, um, but um, aside from being my dad, he was also a drunk um, in every sense of the word. And um, let me see, he was homeless when he passed away. And... Um, he was a veteran, 
He was in the Korean War. Um, he was airborne and he was very, very proud. Um, he was a pain in the ass, uh, but I loved him. And um, there were there are four of us kids. I have there four you know like I have two two brothers and one sister. My older sister I don't talk to. Actually, my older sister, my older brother I don't talk to. I have a younger brother. He is in a group home, and he is just a year younger than I am. So I really don't see him a whole lot anymore. But that's a different story. But it seemed for the most part that uh, none of them <laughs> really liked my dad at all, um, which is kind of interesting. Um, I just decided to deal with that situation a little bit different. So when I was young, yeah, uh, my dad would come home drunk um, on occasion or get drunk at home or whatever. And, you know, alcoholism is a progressive disease, so it didn't all quite start out that way. But, um, it, you know, it did end up that way. And I put myself in a situation where... Um, I would just try to be really good, you know, and try to make sure things were done just very, very well so that, you know, he wouldn't come in and find out that my homework wasn't done or that my uniform wasn't where it should be or whatever. I mean, whatever it was that I had to do so that he wouldn't get mad. Um, but I also learned to talk to my dad and I um, learned to embrace those moments. So he would go in the garage and he would smoke um, and I would go and I would talk to him and he would calm down and stuff, you know, if he was having a bad day. And I just learned a lot about why he did what he did. Um, he had this ringing in his ears that he said was very, very miserable. He, um, well, anyway, he, you know, he had jumped a lot and he had really bad um, back pains and his knees hurt and stuff like that and um, he had really horrible flashbacks and um, back then they really didn't call it PTSD or anything like that. There wasn't really a name like that for it I don't think but you know I remember him doing the whole wringing of his hands and stuff and he would tell me his stories and sometimes he was there when he would tell me and sometimes he would completely check out and just go into these flashbacks where that were very, very descriptive and very, very painful, not only for him, but for, for me to listen to. So, um, uh, I, I mean, I thought to myself, and I'm like this with a lot of things, like, I thought, okay, if, if I really could walk in his shoes, would I drink, would I, you know, um, yeah, would I drink? Yeah, I'd probably do a lot more, you know. Um, he told me those stories that a lot of veterans have, um, that they just probably wouldn't tell anybody. But, you know, maybe he just told them to me or I, I kind of maybe overheard them because he was having a flashback and talking about them. And um, I know that a lot of, I know that a lot, a lot of um, our military guys, you know, have those stories that they won't consciously share with anybody um, for, a variety of reasons. So um, anyway, uh, he ended up, my dad, um, there's lots of stuff, which, like again, between that point and this point, um, but he um, ended up dying um, homeless and he actually died in a VA hospital and they never notified us. Um, he actually went to the mortuary and I guess it was getting to be 30 days and they contacted the postmaster and the postmaster contacted us and let us know that we needed to go over there and uh, we needed to identify him because that was possibly him. Otherwise, he's going to get buried as a John Doe. So, yeah, we went over there and we um, did identify him. Funny thing was is that um, my dad had, and you know, like back then people didn't really get tattoos a lot, you know. And he had just this tattoo that just had his initials. So I remember him telling me, he goes, well, he said, if I get killed, at least I'll have my initials on me for sure, you know. And uh, so um, when they went to go identify him, you know, he had he'd already been dead for like days. He was pretty much like not like kind of deflated. Kind of, and but they did see the tattoo on there, and um, 
thought that was kind of interesting. So um, he actually died on February 15th, and I always like to say, oh yeah, he died of a broken heart. Um, because although they said that he ha he was admitted into the hospital, um, he admitted he was admitted with some kind of a cold, and he actually died in the psych ward of a heart attack. And that's what at least was told to us. Um, but there's newspapers in his car from every day, you know. So he apparently would just walk out, go hang out, and go back over there and go in, or who knows what was going on, you know. I mean, I think that because you know I tried to petition for the records and stuff, and of course they magically disappeared. Couldn't find him, but I think that he probably was into the in, into the psych ward because of his um, his alcoholism and stuff like that. Who and I'm sure he had a, a drug addiction at that time too. And that's a story for another day itself. But um, you know, and that he was a monitor probably, and he probably did have a heart attack because you know alcohol withdrawals will kill you. They're supposed to be horrible. Um, so we actually buried him on March 17th. So it was pretty much, yeah, a month till we, um, till we buried him and stuff. So um, it was funny. I was thinking about this the other day because I was uh, driving around. I was going to go to a show in Whittier to meet this one person who's probably going to help me with a fundraiser. And I passed by this Motel 6. And the Motel 6 in um, Whittier was the last place that he was known to stay prior to checking into the VA hospital. So I saw that and I had thought about that. And it was funny because when he passed away, I I wanted to talk to somebody who had talked to him before that that had happened. So I tried to like go back and talk to all his friends and say, you know, when was the last time you saw him? Did he leave anything here? Was he sick? Um, you know, what did he talk about? You know, how did he look? Um, and it was funny, you know, I just kind of, I, d I just wanted to know, you know, I just, whatever I could, you know, about him. And um, it's kind of, you know, it was really sad because, you know, he died He died alone after all that. He died alone. Um, I always had that feeling that no matter what I did, I you know, I couldn't help him. So um, I have this great compassion for, for, um, veterans or military guys and stuff um for good reason you know um, my mom remarried and she married somebody else just like that pretty much um except for he didn't have that kind of an alcohol problem um but still you know very active and, and you yeah, know i know my mom was doing like the catholic catholic war veterans and you know the bfws and all the different associations that they belong to you know i remember being young and my dad having all his friends over and um you know how they would go do their jumps and just it was it was just really cool and, and, and in some ways it was very very cool you know um it was it's one of those love hate kind of things you know um but um uh, so recently I had met a friend and there were things like when I, when I met him and that he did that and he talked about that um, I heard my dad talk about before and things that he said and um, that I remember, you know, having those conversations with my dad and um, it was funny because I had that sense again, like, well, I could relate to him. And I think he knew, I think he knew that I understood what he was saying. Um, in those few moments, you know, that, that we were serious and talking about that stuff. But, um, I think that, you know, that he, He's, you know, in, in a, not, not in a good spot, you know, and that somehow or another he disconnected. And um, it's, a, it's a very, very helpless feeling on this end, you know, to um, not be able to reach that person when they're in such a dark spot. And, um, you know, I wonder, you know, do I, do I keep doing this or is this part of some kind of crazy lesson that I'm supposed to learn? Or, you know, do I still send a, hey, how are you? I hope you have a good day message. Or do I just leave them alone? Or uh, what do you do? But the funny thing was, is there were so many things about him that he did or said or had 
or the street name by his house that reminded me of my dad. Very, very specific things that, you know, I never saw anybody else do. So it's kind of cool, you know, because I got to, like, remember things that I hadn't seen for crap, like 30-some years, right? Or, or but actually, let me see, um, 25 years, you know, I hadn't seen that. And um, I got to see it in him. And um, it's funny how life does that, you know, and it kind of made me think, okay, what am I supposed to be doing? You know, how does this, how does this all, all play out and stuff? So anyway, I know we all have like these crazy families and stuff, but I just wanted to kind of share that, share that with you. Um, um, and I hope that, I mean, that's just such a helpless feeling when you're dealing with an addict or somebody that's suffering um, in that kind of a way, maybe not even just an addict, you know, like, PTSD or somebody that's just very disconnected. It's just such a helpless feeling. So anyway, um, thank you for listening to my show today. Um, I hope you laughed too. Um, and um, I'd like to get some feedback if you go through and you check out all the stories on my Facebook. That would be fabulous. So um, I'm going to be, again, on Blaine Hubble's show in the morning, and we can talk about some other stuff there. Um, I'm going to do my vlog, and I'm going to do my blog about people that don't like my Facebook. And um, I just want to say thank you for tuning in. Um, like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram, and please subscribe to my, my YouTube channel. That would be fabulous. I'm going to probably try to tell some jokes at some point. Right. I'm like the worst at telling jokes. Jeez. Uh, there isn't like enough drinks to make me tell a joke right. It's just it's just all yeah, yeah, it doesn't really work. But anyway, if you have any events or opportunities or anything going on that you want to talk about, or maybe um hopefully I'll be able to do interviews again. I'll be I'll be doing interviews on my show again very, very soon. Um just contact me because right now I can still always do that on the martial arts show or I can do that on Blaine's show as well. So that would be a lot of fun. Um and like I said, we're going to be doing the new music stuff. And if you have any ideas, uh, let me know. Um, I want to say thank you to Blaine Humbles, um, James Trotter, Charles Orlando, um, my amazing family. And of course, my future supporters who don't even know it yet. Um, it just hasn't hit you. Uh, and there is nothing more important than people. And just please remember that once we forget that, we're pretty much fucked. So this is Jem signing off and I'm sitting here with everything I need and I hope I get to talk to you again. We only went 47 minutes. You should be happy. You're off the hook. Go to the bathroom, do whatever you have to do, and I will talk to you again soon. Enjoy the rest of your week. Thank you very much.